Good morning. The last couple of weeks, my microphone hasn't worked very well, so I'm just testing it. Can you hear me in the back of church? That means you can hear me. Okay, that'll be fine. If, especially when I'm doing the homily, you can't hear me, raise your hand and I'll come over to the ambo and preach from there. Thank you.
or you can fill out when you come on that day. Please wear a mask and bring your own insurance card on your medical Part D card from age 65 and up. If you have any questions, please send a text message or leave a voicemail for Team Zoo at 253 970-9295. Daily Mass schedule is every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 8 a.m. We pray the Holy Rosary at 7.30 a.m. Rosary Rally will be here at St. Anne, October 10th at 12 noon. Our Lady of Fatima requests that we pray the Rosary for the world peace and especially in the United States during this current time of need. Please take home bulletin for more information. The Mass today is being celebrated by Father Pat. In today's reading, we learn the following lesson. How different are the Lord's ways from our own ways. God gracious and good to all. The Lord is generous and love to all those who respond to his invitation, as well as those who are slow to hear his call. May Jesus be in our lives. Please join me, St. Saint Michael Prayer. This prayer is being said for the right to life as taught by our Catholic saints. St. Michael, Just a reminder to send us all cell phones in the mass. Now please rise and take a moment to greet your fellow parishioners. Good morning and welcome as we gather for our liturgy. We continue in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We cannot understand the generous goodness of our God. Why is he so patient with us sinners? Why does he give us gifts away to people who in our opinion don't deserve them or waste them? But God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not always our thoughts. Let us open our hearts to his goodness and his mercy. In today's gospel, both the first and the last receive his love. Both the first and the last are invited to his table. He invites us now to the Eucharistic table. And with confidence in his goodness, let us ask him to bring us, bring us his forgiving grace and mercy. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, you continue to forgive sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in your generosity, you continue to grant awesome gifts, both, both to ourselves and to others, although sometimes we do not use them correctly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, in your patience, you continue to invite us to think and act according to your gracious ways. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we give praise to our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet I remain in the flesh. That I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more but each of them also got the usual wage. Upon receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give to this last one? the same as to you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You will see day laborers here at the street corner at the exit from the Home Depot, just across the freeway from here. They're people who are looking for work. And people who are looking for workers usually know where to find a gathering of day laborers. People hire them for work around their home, perhaps in their yard or some kind of cleanup. Certainly construction people go and look for workers who will hire for a day, a particular job where they need extra hands. Most of those men, in a sense, are living rather desperate lives. Their families need the income that they can get by working that day job. And so they gather in small groups each day. They're there early in the morning until sometime in the afternoon. Those who haven't found work go back to their homes. But you don't have to be a day laborer to have financial worries. The pandemic has caused high unemployment, and the collapse of small family businesses, and perhaps some have been threatened with the loss of their homes. When you can't afford even to lose a day's work, a day's pay might be the difference between, say, paying the rent, buying food for the family. Perhaps it might make the difference of getting a prescription that is necessary. But as we think of perhaps day laborers or those without work today, we could multiply those fears by, say, 100 to get a sense of what it was like 
in the time of Jesus. At that time, poverty was so severe that perhaps 95% of the population were desperately poor. And for them, a day's wage meant the difference between buying food for the family or going hungry that day. For many, that was very important, obviously, to provide for the family. And as they went to the marketplace, that place where others would come to look for laborers, there must have been a kind of uneasy feeling in their stomach. What will happen if nobody comes to hire me? Even, say, young strong workers who would be the first to be chosen, they probably had that uneasiness, wondering, will someone come? And then when they, the first, were hired and taken away, others would continue to wait and to hope that somebody might come and hire them also. We might multiply that uneasiness, that fear. Say, men are, who were handicapped in some way and perhaps weren't able to work as hard as those who were totally able, or perhaps a widow looking for work that she might buy food for her family, perhaps an orphan who was looking for work so that he or she might have food or have food for brothers or sisters. Everyone would need a day's wage to buy that food. A day's wage would make that difference between eating and going hungry of living, perhaps being healthy, or perhaps because of starvation or poor diet, would lose one's health. Certainly people would much rather be one of those first hired, even though it meant a long day of work, rather than not being hired in that first crew, waiting and hoping that someone would come, and knowing that very often, if they weren't hired until later, or perhaps midday, instead of receiving that full day's pay, only a partial day, and so only be able to buy a partial amount of the food the family would need. The landowner in today's parable certainly was accustomed to hiring lit workers, but he would also know from experience that many of these people were in desperate need. He was someone who obviously cared about those he hired, those in the community who needed work perhaps different from other, say, employers who were just looking for workers who take the best, um, well, the others would just have to work out, work out things for themselves or defend themselves. As I mentioned today, workers would earn that, that, that denarius, which was sufficient to buy food for the day. And remember, this is a time when people wouldn't have, say, canned goods or refrigerators, so you couldn't store up food for those lean days. You pretty much had to buy what you needed that day and then the next day, you'd buy what you needed that day. This particular landowner had pity on those who could not find work. And so we see him going back to the marketplace, hiring workers all day long. But we tend to identify with those workers who, say, worked all day. And then when they saw those who worked only an hour getting a full day's pay, thinking, oh, we'll get more because we've worked all day. And then when they only receive the same amount, that kind of bitterness or resentfulness, how come, how come they get a whole day's wage? We've worked so hard, we get just the same. It's not fair, it's unjust. But the landlord talks about being generous, about being someone who is truly good, reaching out to those who are in need. The parable may rub us the long way as we identify with, with the workers, we know what it is to work hard all day long, to earn, say, a just salary for a just days uh, of work. And if somebody came in, say, at the last minute and worked, say, for an hour, doing the same work we were doing, if they received the same amount, we would somehow feel uneasy that that wasn't fair or that was, wasn't just. But the parable challenges us to pause and to look at the landowner and look at his generosity. In a sense, would we want God to measure all our good deeds and our bad deeds in a scale and then give us what we deserve, whether the bad might outweigh the good or cancel one or the other out? God is generous with us, sharing with us his grace and his mercy. And we see that in the landowner who is generous with all the workers who came to him the parable, in a sense, is not so much about us and what we deserve. 
It's about God, the reign of God, or the kingdom of God. And that means an accounting system that's much different than perhaps what we think an accounting system would be. In the parable, the landowner doesn't make those who came in last like feel like second-class citizens or inferior people. He treats each one with dignity and with respect, paying the first ones the agreed-upon wage, but being generous to those who came at the very end. God treats all, welcoming all, wanting to share his blessings and his gifts with all. The measuring rod that God uses is the measuring rod of generosity. Each of us needs God's mercy and God's forgiveness. And God treats each, each of us with generosity, with mercy. In these days of the pandemic, we need courage and comfort, perseverance, hope, assurance that God has not forgotten us. And we hear in the parable today that the one who in charge wants to be generous with us, wants us to be aware that he comes to share his mercy, his grace with us in an abundant kind of way. We might be those who have worked hard and been faithful to the Lord all our lives, and he generously shares his life with us. We might be others who find ourselves caught up in sin, constantly falling, even as we try to follow the Lord's way. And the Lord also says to us, welcome, come. I want to share my blessings and my gifts with you also. And as we think of God's generosity, the way God is acting, you might say, what does God want from us? Just to receive his gifts? Certainly he wants us to receive and welcome his gifts, but he also wants us as disciples of Jesus to share with others that we would act with generosity, that we don't look at others and say, well, what have they done? Have they earned my friendship? Are they worthy of my reaching out to help them in some way? How are they acting? Rather than judging that we would act with generosity and mercy, Isaiah in the first reading reminds us that God's ways are not our ways. Our ways are not God's ways. But he's challenging us to act more like God's way. That God who is so generous, that he would come to inspire us, that we too might act with generosity. That we who have received his mercy might be messengers of that mercy, and that generosity with others. The parable of the vineyard, our laborers in the vineyards, ask us, not to just think of the laborers and perhaps the injustice that strikes us, but rather to look at the owner who is so generous with the gifts that he has received, sharing with others as they have need for that sharing. Let us stand and renew our faith in God, Father, Son, and Spirit, who is generous with us, sharing with us life and mercy. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through Christ Jesus, who is our life, let us pray for our many needs. To God, who is near to all, who call upon him with faith and confidence. For all who proclaim the gospel with their lives, especially teachers and missionaries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor in the vineyards of peace, especially national leaders and elected representatives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer and die for their faith, especially Christians in the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who strive to end disease and suffering, especially doctors and medical researchers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather at this table, especially the sorrowful and the lonely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy the fullness of God's heavenly glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now offer our personal intentions. For these and for all the prayers entered in our book of prayer and those that are held in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, owner of the vineyard, listen to the prayers of your people. Number us among your compassionate, merciful, and healing workers, and make us generous stewards of the abundant gifts you have so graciously bestowed upon us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our prayer and sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of all. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, sending down upon them your spirit like, a do, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, his assistant, Bishop Daniel, and may you save you, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us share some sign of peace that we would share with those near us.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Together, let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion, uniting ourselves with those who are watching on live stream. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth to share God's mercy and God's generous love with others. Our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.